Hello and welcome to SMA Talks, a monthly series where Sergeant Major of the Army Michael Grinston discusses important topics that directly impact the day-to-day -day business of the U.S. Army. This month we're discussing financial literacy and why it's important to leaders and the Army. In addition to Sergeant Major of the Army Grinston, we also have a very special guest, Ms. Robin Morozik. Ms. Morozik is an accredited financial counselor, the Army's financial education program manager, and a military spouse. Thank you both for coming. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. So, Sergeant Major, we're going to start with you. Uh, why should leaders care about their subordinates' finances? Yes, because this directly impacts readiness. If soldiers can take care of their financial uh, means, they can take care of their families, and ultimately work performance will be better. But also, when you think of people first, if you care about the finances of your soldiers and you want them to succeed, not just in the Army, but in your life, and I think that's extremely important. Thank you, Sergeant Major. And so this next question is for both of you. And we're gonna start with you, Sergeant Major, and then go to Ms. Morozik. Can you explain why financial counseling is a requirement in the Army? First of all, in 2016, in the National Defense Authorization Act, they said financial readiness um, must be used in the military, and they gave some very specific guidelines for when we have to do this counseling. But I also think this is just about knowing your soldiers and caring about you know, how they're going to take care of their finances, uh, finances and how they're going to take care of their families. I think that's extremely important. And Ms. Morozik, uh, why, do you, why do you think it's a requirement? for the Army? Yeah, so uh, along with SMA, so when the NDA came out, they went and they created the blended retirement system, right? And they also went and said, we wanna go and back this up with some financial literacy training throughout various milestones within a soldier's career. So they looked at, at just everything as a whole and said, we wanna go and be able to reach people right from the time that they raise their hand to the time that they're transitioning out of the army, whenever that may be. And so they looked at some, you know, kind of benchmark standards and some just different, you know, regulations and looking at how they wanted to make that. So they went and created this directive type memo that set forth standards for financial literacy in, t in different touch points like future soldier, initial entry training, for, uh, PCSing, marriage, divorce, birth of child, vesting the TSP, continuation pay, leadership training, all, oh, and several more. And they said, we want to be able to instill a, a certain amount of financial literacy that can be built upon and that's sequential and progressive. And so that's the requirement piece of it. But let's go into look at Yes, it is a requirement, but it's something that we should be doing anyways. So personal financial readiness is mission readiness. We have to go and make sure that we are paying our due debts because then that means we're going to be able to keep our security clearance. So they, they're tied two and two. But we, we just need to go and make sure that we're having that personal responsibility to go in to be taking part in our financial education and being able to build upon it and learn what we need to do to build wealth, to be able to be more financially responsible and what we can do as leaders to be able to help those that are, are having some financial issues and, and lead them in the right direction. Thank you, Ms. Morozik. We're gonna start with you again for this next question. Um, how does having conversations about finances help people beyond readiness for the Army? Yeah, so I don't know about you, but finances are a taboo subject. It's not something that we regularly bring up at the dinner table. It's not something that we're gonna go and say, oh yeah, this is something great that we wanna go into talk about. So we know that financial readiness is mission readiness, but it does come back to the number one goal for the CSA, which is people first, right? So when, when the uniform comes off, what is, you know, what is Private Smith going to be doing in their home life? So we've got to look at that. And personal financial management is managing your money. And, but it's more than that. We know that finances affect all of the areas of our lives, right? So if we have stress within our relationships, they might be able to tie back to finances. If we have stress at work, um, it's going to be able to tie back to personal finances. 
So what we're trying to go into to do is be able to create an environment where we're giving those tools and those resources so that our soldiers are able to go and and to just look at it and say, you know what, I'm going to set forth a, a personal savings goal that maybe is going to be able to be enhanced with a spending plan worksheet of which we know we can go into find on our our awesome personal financial readiness website, financialfrontline.org. And we can look at it kind of like how we do for personal fitness, how we do for when we're trying to get into shape. We're, we're prepping ourselves to be able to have a financial successful future. And we want to save for emergencies, right? I think this current... Um, just situation with COVID is just one more reason to be able to see where having emergency savings is going to be able to help to set us up for success for when something happens, we kind of have that backup plan, right? And we are big in the Army about making sure family, our spouses, our children, everybody is holistic that we're all going to be able to be in sync with one another. And we need to open those conversations with our, with our families, with our spouses, with our children on personal finances and teach them and include them because we want to be able to go into have mission readiness, but we've got to tie in people first. Thank you, Robin. And uh, Sergeant Major, how, how do you feel about the conversations about finances being just more than readiness for the Army? When you have the ability to have difficult conversations, and I agree with Robin, this is a difficult uh, conversation. It's a, it, it is extremely important to have these conversations about finances. It's about how do you want to spend your life? It's where do you spend your, your time and your money, and that's a resource. So you actually have to have the conversation. If you don't have the conversation, it may lead to all other kinds of issues. If you can, if you save to have your kids go to school and you understand that, you have that conversation with your spouse. You have that conversation with your children. It can actually build a better family. It can build better resiliency. And some of those other things just go away. If you just start with a conversation, if you ignore it, the problem sometimes doesn't go away. It just yeah. manifests over time. Yeah, it can only get worse. Um, thank you, SMA. And uh, another question for both of you, um, and we're going to start with you, Ms. Morozik. Uh, what are some of the warning signs of financial risk? Ah, warning signs. Yeah. So this is actually quite big. You know, um, we one of the things that we're trying to do with all of our new financial literacy and curriculum is trying to go into to teach folks to be able to to see that. Right. So looking at both within themselves and then the people that they're leading. So not having emergency savings, um, not being able to pay bills, going and using one credit card and transferring the balance to another, right? That's That might be a warning sign. Um, we can also look at getting regular calls from debt collectors, having non-sufficient fees or commonly known as overdraft fees. Those are all warning signs. And that may be more at the surface level, but let's dig a little bit deeper. So are we having problems at work? Are we losing out on promotions? Are we getting negative evaluations? Those are also warning signs. We know that finance is one of the top, it's number two for the top five reasons for security clearance adjudication. It's top two reasons. So when we go and we look at mission readiness, we can see right there, if we can't go and maintain a security clearance, we can't go and continue to have our jobs. We're going to go and to lose out on, on promotions. We're going to get reduction in rank, administrative discharge. So those are on the military side of the house. But what about for our personal side, right? So are there warning signs like domestic violence, suicidal ideation, are there, is there a divorce? Is there separation? All of those things, whether we want to think about it or not, all tie back to personal finance. And if we have those problems in our lives, we need to be able to look both introspectively and then also be able to acknowledge it within our squads, within our teams, all of this to be able to say, there's a problem. How can I go and help to get the resources like Army Emergency Relief? 
same personal financial managers and counselors at installation, using those resources that are available and knowing that they're there, becoming educated yourself on finances and being able to know how to go in to help someone. Those are all part of warning signs and what we need to do and what we're responsible for both as civilians as soldiers is, is to take care of ourselves and to take care of our own. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Morazic. And Sergeant Major, uh, as a leader, what are some of the warning signs that you've seen for financial risk and how can NCOs help? Yeah, I think uh, Robin explained that uh, fairly well. I, I would say, you know, having a bounce check or unable to pay bills, those are the easy ones. As an NCO, if we know our soldiers, I think we'll see some of the warning signs, but we may have to actually dig a little bit deeper. So if there is a domestic violence um, occurrence and something happens and you know your soldiers, it's like, why? You may have to ask, why were they fighting? One example was, you know, the, the police were called, they had a domestic violence, and we go in and we say, oh, you know, they were fighting, you know, husband and spouse. You know, I think that happens every once in a while. But then we said, well, why were they fighting? Oh, well, they were fighting over formula. You know, like, why would a man and a woman fight over a formula? Well, they just didn't have the money to buy the formula. So it actually goes all the way back to finances. And that's one thing, I think, knowing your soldiers, understanding, and not just take it at face value. You may have to dig a little bit deeper, and you may find the root cause is a financial issue. Sorry, Major. After 33 years of service, uh, what would you have done differently financially as a junior soldier? Start earlier and start with more money. So <laughs> I think that's uh, the advice I'd give probably every soldier. The earlier you, uh, you save, uh, the more time your money has to make more money. And that's one advice I'd give to all the junior soldiers and to myself. Start early and go and save as much as you can. And over time, it will help you out. All right, thank you, Sergeant Major of the Army Grinston and Ms. Morozik. And thanks to those watching online right now. If you have any questions for the SMA or ideas for future episodes, please leave them in the comments section or use hashtag SMA Talks on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you both. Thank you. Thank you.